So what is on tap today at Coos's Corner? We're talking about the first week of fall camp for the West Virginia Mountaineers football team. We want to kind of go over and, and review all the different position rooms and what the coaches and players had to say during their press conferences and what we can take away after week one of fall camp. So pull up a chair, sit back, relax, and let me serve you up this shot. Top shelf college football content. What is up, college sports fans, fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? This is Coos, and welcome in to another edition of Coos's Corner. So pull that chair up, and let's dig into today's topic, which is week one of fall camp for the Mountaineers. First, I want to just talk about, in general, uh, one of the big negatives that most people have been saying about the Mountaineers, and the reason a lot of the media pundits have been picking the Mountaineers to finish eighth, or, or at least in the bottom half of the Big 12 Conference, and get around five or six wins this year is because of the number of transfers we had to leave the team, the number of guys we lost altogether uh, due to transfers and also to graduation. We lost a lot of guys with experience uh, from last year's team. However, one thing that they don't take into consideration, uh, even though we have a lot of new guys, we do have a lot of new guys with experience because we brought in some grad transfers. And also, this is the first year in college football where they allowed OTAs. So they allowed these summer workouts for guys to come in and work on their craft and, and things like that, just like the NFL does over the summer where the coaches could be there and help these guys out and coach them up a little bit. And that what that does is it allows for these newer guys who are with the team to catch up so they don't have to start on day one. So as long as the guys you bring in are talented and fit the scheme and the culture of what you're trying to build, they won't be as far behind as they would have in years past. So I'm not sure – if losing that many guys with experience is going to be as big a factor in this coming season as it would have been in past seasons, and not only for West Virginia, but for any team who, who lost a lot of guys and, and took advantage of those OTAs. Also, another thing Coach Brown mentioned in his press conference regarding the whole team as a whole, strength and conditioning coach Mike Joseph came to him and said, Coach, these guys had a really good summer, both physically and mentally. They look good. I like what, I like what we have on this team. Coach Brown said that's the first time in his he's in his fourth season. This is the first time since he's been at West Virginia that Coach Joseph has done that. He said that's not something he's just going to come and tell me unless it's true. So these guys work their butts off in the offseason. They change their bodies. They've got their minds right. And I think they're ready to go and they're hungry for this upcoming 2022 season. And that makes me feel good. Now, let's start with the defensive side of the ball as we look at different position groups. Look, first, let's start with the defensive backs. This is the one area on the team where most fans are probably the most concerned because we lost a lot of starting experience from this from this position, especially from the corner position. However, they brought guys in with, with experience. They brought in three grad transfers to play defensive back. They brought in Wesley McCormick from James Madison. They brought in Rashad Ajayi from Colorado State. And they brought in Jasir Cox from North Dakota State, who will probably play uh, I'm expecting him to probably play the safety, the spear safety position. So those guys combined, those three guys, Ajayi, McCormick, and Cox, have over 1,000 snaps among them, between them, in college football. Now, it's not at the Power 5 level, but it is at college football, Division One college football, Ajayi at Colorado State, a, a group of five school, McCormick at James Madison, which is now a group of five school, and Cox at North Dakota State, which is a national championship winning dynasty at the FCS level. So you have three guys with a, with a lot of experience at the college level, and one thing defensive backs coach Shadon Brown brought up, when the lights come on and they're in these big environments, like when they go to up the road to play pit and they're in front of 70,000 people, they're not going to get rattled because they've been there and they've done that. And that's going to mean a lot to this team. So they didn't go out and just get a bunch of young guys they got guys with experience that have been there and played football. And for those who think that promoting a guy from FCS means he's not as talented, I beg to differ. One of the things Shadon Brown talked about, actually two things. One was Charles Woods, who he says in his mind will likely be the best corner in the Big 12 this year, in his opinion. And he said he thinks he can cover anybody in the country. He's gotten so comfortable now that he's coaching up the other guys for him on the field. He said practice has gotten easy to him because everything's moving so slow to him now. The game has slowed down, and he's so knowledgeable and, and knows the system and everything so good that 
practice is easy for him. So if he stays healthy, he may be the best corner in the league. And and he's an FCS guy. He he was promoted from an FCS team, guys. So the, arguably the best corner in the in the Big Twelve was an FCS transfer. So these FCS guys can play. And another thing, one thing Shadon Brown talked about, which I encourage you guys to go back and listen to this press conference. It was a great one, a very, very great information. Shadon Brown is a very bright guy. You can tell that, and you can tell he he uh, really has his finger on the pulse of his guys and knows what makes him tick. But he talked about how the DNA of West Virginia football is blue-collar, hardworking, right? That's, blue collar, that's the, the DNA of the team and the DNA of our state. They want guys with that same DNA. But who has that DNA better than guys who are transferring up from an FCS level? They, they have a chip on their shoulder because they think they're good enough to play at the Power 5 level. So they come in hungry, they come in ready to prove themselves, and they come in ready to work. And that's the kind of guys that, that this program can utilize and that will fit well culturally and emotionally and everything else, and a lot of times physically. So I, I feel really good about, uh, about these guys. Um, and they spend a lot of time vetting these guys, making a lot of calls about them to make sure they fit culturally, to make sure they're the, the right fit, uh, you know, personality-wise, attitude-wise, and that kind of thing. So I feel really good about that. Now, let's move to the linebacker spot. Lee Coba. When you mention Lee Coba's name in a press conference, Jordan Leslie's eyes light up like a Christmas tree. Nobody's talking about this guy because he kind of flew under the radar. He was He kind of went the hard route. He started out his career at Syracuse. Things didn't go go there very well for him, so he transferred down to junior college level, was a stud in junior college, transfers up now to West Virginia. And Coach Brown said he came in from day one really, really hungry, said the guy just loves the game of football, gives it everything he has at every practice. He came in from day one being a leader. They said he is just a natural power five middle linebacker. He's the quarterback of the defense, and he's, they said every, the whole team just gravitated to him because of his leadership, and he's that guy. So I, I think we'll see really good things out of Lee Coba this year. Defensive line, going to, probably going to be the strongest unit on the on the defense, maybe even on the entire team. Obviously, we have Dante Steele's coming back, who's an All American candidate, up for many preseason awards. You know, Jordan Jefferson's back. Taj Austin is expecting to have a really good year. Uh, he did a press conference. He's really hungry. You can tell he's really really hungry. Uh, him and Dante and Jordan Jefferson, these guys, they really want to win football games for West Virginia, for the state, and for the school. Uh, so I, I think we got really good things uh, coming from this group. And Dante, he changed his body over the offseason. When he talked to the NFL scouts about what he needed to change and the reason he came back is because he needed to make these changes in order to improve his draft stock. He needed to change his body, get in better shape, and get better conditioned. And he's done that. Coach Brown said Dante's uh, improved his body and gotten where he needs to be from a body standpoint. He put a lot, in a lot more time in the offseason getting in better physical condition so that he would be ready to play more snaps. And not only play more snaps, but play more snaps, uh, not under fatigue. Because when you're under fatigue, the fundamentals kind of go down the tubes, and he doesn't want that to happen. He said he'll, you know, he'll he wants to be able to play fast for the entire game. He wants to be able to, uh, you know, chase down the ball easier uh, without running out of breath. And he just and he's done all that. So I really like I really like what I'm seeing out of him and the rest of this defensive line as well. Now let's move over to the offensive side of the ball. First, the quarterback position. All four of the quarterbacks are getting equal equal reps at practice. So it's an open competition between JT Daniels, Garrett Green, Will Goose Crowder, and Nico Marchio. All four guys are getting equal reps. Now, uh, Goose Crowder wasn't at the first day of practice because he was under the weather, but he has been at the other ones as far as I know. Uh, now, as far as JT Daniels goes, they talk about his maturity and his intelligence all the time. They did ask Graham Harrell about the comfort level of him and, and JT working together, and he said it definitely is an advantage. Uh, from the time they spent together at USC, even though some of the terminology may have changed, JT, uh, you know, still remembers what they ran at USC. So all he has to do is say, "Hey, we call it this now," and he'll say, "Okay, I remember running that there," and then he goes and runs it. So he's picking things up very quickly. It's been a very, very small learning curve. So that's going to be an advantage. He can, uh, you know, you're not having to start from scratch. They they did show a few brief clips. Uh, I did see on one YouTube channel. I don't remember if it was, I think it was Earsports.com. Maybe showed a few brief clips. Uh, of a couple of open practices, and I, in one of the quarterback drills at the end of end of one of the practices, uh, JT Daniels did throw two interceptions in those drills. Uh, now I don't know if they were his fault or not, or if the wide receivers were in the wrong spot. I'm not sure. Obviously, without being there and putting it in proper context, you know, it's probably not a big deal. And also, it was only the second day of practice, so 
we can't put put too much weight on it. But he did throw a couple picks. Um, that being said, let's move on to the offensive line position. This is expected to be the strongest unit on the offensive side of the ball and, and could end up being the strongest unit of the entire football team. And one thing Coach Brown mentioned in his presser, and it was a great point, a lot of us fans have talked about how the offensive line was so inconsistent last year. And, you know, Jarrett Daigie led, I think he led the Big 12 in sacks taken uh, and also in interceptions, and a lot of people put that on the offensive line. Well, Neil Brown said you can't really do that because, number one, sometimes the quarterback holds on to the ball longer than they're supposed to. And he also said that uh, running backs miss blocking assignments, and he said that was actually a problem for them last year. They missed a lot of blocking assignments. And he said their tight ends also missed a lot of blocking assignments a year ago. So he said, number one, the offensive line isn't to blame for all the sacks that, that were had last year. Some of that goes on the quarterback, the running backs, and the tight end. Also raved about how uh, the offensive line has looked. They, they all had a great all season. Uh, most of the players you talk to on the team agree with the coaches that the offensive line probably had the best off season of any position group on the team. Uh, their chemistry together is better. Uh, I mean, they hang out together off the field. They're really close, and that means a lot when you get on game day and you're taking on double teams, and guys need to know where each other are going and what, what, they're, what they have to do. When you have great team chemistry uh, that, for, on that offensive line, that will go a long way. Uh, they expect big things out of Wyatt Milam now that they've moved him to left tackle. He's a left-handed guy, so they said he'll be more comfortable over there. Uh, and, they, and he's also, you know, Expected to be one of the best offensive linemen in the Big 12, and he's only going to be a sophomore, folks. Jaquay Hubbard is coming on strong. They said he had a great offseason. He's pushing pushing Brandon Yates for that starting right tackle spot. And, of course, the interior of their offensive line uh, is going to be pretty solid with James Gamitter, Zach Frazier, and uh, Doug Nestor there uh, in, on, in the middle of that offensive line. Now, running backs. Talk about blocking. That was one of the things they focused on in the offseason was improving their blocking in the passing game. And according to Coach Chad Scott and according to Tony Mathis, they've done that. They worked hard on their pass blocking to improve their pass blocking, and I think they've done that. Um, I expect big things out of Tony Mathis this year. He's hungry. Uh, he's worked, they said he's one of the hardest workers on the team, and he, he was that a year ago when he wasn't even getting that many reps. Uh, Tony Mathis is a hard worker. He's following Letty Brown. So he's learning from one of the uh, one of the best running backs to ever ever put him on at West Virginia. Uh, so I expect big things from him. That Justin Johnson, they said, is coming on strong. He's gaining a lot more confidence in himself, uh, starting to really play a lot better. Things are starting to slow down for him. So I expect big things out of him too. And uh, Chad Scott mentioned specifically that Johnson has come a really long way in his pass blocking abilities. And one really cool takeaway, and a lot of you, this might be repeat stuff to you, so I, I apologize if that's the case. But for those of you who may not get a chance to watch those those press conferences, I wanted to bring to you kind of what they said. But anyway, C.J. Donaldson, uh, a we might have a tight end playing running back this year, folks. They they tried to, they're trying C.J. Donaldson at running back. I guess with the you know with Lynn J. Dixon transferring out, they needed to fill that spot. They're putting T.J. Donaldson or I'm sorry C.J. Donaldson in that spot. He's a freshman that they recruited to be a tight end, and they said he's actually picking it up really well. Coach Chad Scott said he was really impressed with him. So we could have a 240-pound running back back there. Now, me personally, uh, Ch Coach Scott didn't talk about this, but me personally, I envision him lining up maybe some is like in that H-back spot, kind of between the running back and the line of scrimmage where, where he can go out in the flat and catch balls. Uh, you can send him in motion. He could act as kind of a you know a hybrid tight end running back type player. Uh, I think, you know, with his size and apparently with his skill set, he's athletic enough to play running back or tight end. Might be a great spot to put him. Uh, and they said he's good with the ball in his hands as well. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops and if he actually ends up getting some reps at the running back spot during the season. Uh, and then a wide receiver's position, they're really high on Bryce Ward Wheaton. They said, uh, you know, Coach Graham Harrell talked about some big plays that were made at practice and how they were all downfield shots to Bryce Ward Wheaton. So that's a good sign. And then also Caden Prather. Coach Brown talked about how Caden Prather uh, really changed his body and improved his body between spring fall camp so they're expecting big things out of him too because he's doing what he needs to do to get better so uh i'm, I'm really expecting big things i think this mountaineer team is going to be a lot better than people are thinking they're going to be uh i'm really excited about what the hard work the guys have put in, in the offseason i'm really excited about the team chemistry that seems to be there now uh, everybody on this team seems to be pulling the rope in the same direction now uh, 
I think we're more athletic than we've ever been, especially in the defensive secondary. Guys are faster. Guys are longer. Guys are more athletic. Uh, we've got, you know, we're we're not we're no longer loaded with just Charles Woods and a bunch of young guys. It's Charles Woods, a few young guys, and some grad transfers with experience. And oh, by the way, as far as the defensive backfield goes, uh, Mumu Benwalt Hodge, Jacoby Spells, two highly talented freshmen that were recruited at that spot. I, I'm not sure how much they'll play this year. They will play on special teams. Likely, but more than likely, but uh, Coach Shadon Brown said right now they're still in the developmental phase, uh, so they're not there yet. But I do expect big things out of those two young uh, cornerbacks because they're, they're both extremely talented. So uh, with that being said, I want to hear your thoughts, Mountaineer Nation. What do you think about this uh, first week of fall camp? Uh, what are your takeaways from it? And also, uh, what's the one position group that you're most concerned about on this team? And do you think – the Mountaineers will struggle in the defensive secondary, or do you think that these grad transfers we've brought in will will do a good job and will fit right in with what uh, Coach Brown and his staff are trying to do here, uh, and we'll just be able to pick up where we left off? So I want to get your thoughts on that. Don't forget about my merch store, guys. Up through August 7th, you get 20% off anything in my merch store. Take advantage of that sale. If you've been wanting to buy something, I've been putting it off, now's your time because these sales only last a few days. Uh, and they don't come around, but every so often. So go take advantage of the twenty percent off sale of my merch store. You can get the products that are on screen right now, plus a few others. Don't forget about the links in my description box for Fanatics, Amazon, BetUS for your online shopping and online betting. Don't forget about the join button right below to become a member of my channel. And last but not least, if you want to support me for absolutely one hundred percent free, you can do it in four ways. You can like the video, share the video, post that comment underneath the video, and, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. With that being said, I really appreciate you tuning in. Until until the next time, Q Country Roads.